SpaceX has its eyes on the skies as their latest cargo capsule filled with food and experiments heads for a rendezvous with the International Space Station. Now, the booster that propelled the payload into space touched down on land in Cape Canaveral yesterday. It's very cool to watch this. Only the third time that feat has been accomplished, but it's kind of fun to watch. SpaceX making an aggressive push to launch as many as two rockets per month this year and a rocket a week by 2019. Here to discuss the privatization of space is Lawrence Krauss, a prominent physicist and director of the Origins Project at Arizona State University. Also, by the way, the author of the greatest story ever told, Dash, so far. Uh, Lawrence, thank you very much for joining us. Um, what's your take on all of this, you know, the private sector getting into the space business? Can, I mean, well, can it, it be profitable and is it a good thing? Well, I think it's a good thing that, uh, yeah, I think it's a good thing. It's cool. You just said it's cool to yeah. watch that thing land again. And I think the point is that the private industry can get in the space business after the government sort of takes the forefront. So, you know, NASA for a long time taught us how to get into a low Earth space orbit, and industry is now improving on that and tweaking on it, making it more efficient and cheaper. So I think there's a real potential business plan there, although there are problems. The fact is, getting into space is hard. It's expensive, and there will be disasters. And yeah. right now, SpaceX is lucky that it hasn't had any people in any of its accidents. But there will be accidents, and that's always going to provide setbacks. But I see a potential business model there. But that's low Earth orbit. When we get to the real space exploration, when we get to the frontiers of space, I can't really see any, any role for private industry at that point now. It's the government that has to do it. And it's going to take a long time before anything becomes so are possible you talking, for private industry. Are you talking going back to the moon, or do we need to push further out? And uh, a lot is made of Mars. Would you like us, you know, more effort put into Mars, or is that just well, well, you know? uh, well, Mars is exciting because, of course, mm. we'd like to know if there was once life on Mars. And I know Elon is very interested in going to Mars, but I don't see pri I don't see the business plan to go to Mars. And moreover, I also really don't see the point from a scientific perspective in sending humans there in the near term. I know it's great for adventure and it is cool to watch, but we can send rovers there and as I often say you can send uh, a <laughs> rover to Mars for the price of making a movie about sending Bruce Willis to Mars. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. So that becomes a question of does the government have the, uh, I guess, impetus, does the, does, I guess it depends on the administration uh, in charge, but is there and, the, and it is there me. the, well yes, is there the, the will, if you like, from a government perspective to spend a lot of money to do this? Well, I think that's the concern of mine, because if you, if you don't have government involved in what it really needs to be involved in, and that's including mm. NASA getting involved in, in near-Earth uh, uh, viewing, because in fact uh, uh, only government can, can do those kind of things, can, can monitor the Earth for climate change, or in fact can, can send satellites to explore the universe. That's what government is for, and I'm a little worried that this administration is focusing a little too much on getting NASA out of, of Earth monitoring and also out of really f doing fundamental science. I think you can do both. I can think you can do the adventure and the science, but you have to understand what government is good for and what it isn't. Yeah, that's true, and of course you have other entrepreneurs out there, because there's uh, Richard, Sir Richard Branson and uh, Virgin Galactic. There's a lot of different entities out there. There's Jeff Bezos of Amazon. I mean, well, you know, and you know. There, there's talk about you doing space tourism, and I know yeah. that that's there's a large number. And I also tend to, I'm, I guess, I'm a little jaded about that too, because what we learned from the space shuttle, which was after all was probably monitor as well as any spacecraft, that w roughly one to two percent of the people we send into space are going to die. And, and, you know, there were two accidents in a little over 100 missions. And, and it, if that starts happening in the private enterprise where people die, you're going to see big problems. The lawyers will be making money, but I'm not sure <laughs> anyone else will. Now, assuming this all happens and we start sending tourists into space, would you be happy to go on one of those flights? Uh, yeah, I probably would. I, I probably would. I wouldn't. I'd. Uh, I used to want to go to Mars, but the only way to go to Mars is one way, and and I think now I'm kind of happier here on Earth. Although, actually, in the current climate, maybe Mars isn't so bad. That's true. <laughs> and you know what? Matt Damon made it back, so it maybe not. But uh, yeah, Laura, yeah. Oh, it's, it's, that's the movies. Lawrence that's Krauss. the movies. It's, yeah. The real world is harder. It is indeed. Thank you so much, Lawrence, for joining us. Really appreciate it Thanks. on this President's Thank Day. Thank you.